Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Signalink USB audio interface for ham radios. So I picked this thing up at a ham fest over the summer and it came with its original box and all of its original accessories. I don't think it was used very much by the previous owner. Anyway, I'll show you what I got with it and then we'll go through the process of setting it up and trying it out. So like I said, I bought this used at a ham fest, but I think these are all the accessories that you'd get with one of these if you were going to buy it new. Obviously you get the Signalink USB module itself. You get an audio patch cable with 3.5 millimeter jacks on both ends. There's a mini CD that comes along in the package. You get a nice detailed printed instruction manual that I highly recommend you read through at least twice. So this unit happened to come packaged with a Kenwood cable, model SLCAB13K. This should allow me to use the signal link with my old Kenwood TS440. We'll talk more about that later in the video. And along with the cable, there are some instructions on how to set jumpers inside the signal link and some kind of little jumper module here that we'll learn about together <laughs> once I get into this thing. So before I connect the signal link up to my radio or a computer, I need to pull this thing apart and check or set some jumper settings that are inside the device. So along with the Kenwood cable, I got some instructions on how to set the jumpers for a Kenwood radio. Now if you don't happen to have a cable or you've lost the instructions that come with it, there are instructions on setting the jumpers both on this CD and on the Tigertronics website, which I'll link in the description below. So to get this thing apart, there's four screws on the front. And I'm going to use a 3 seconds Allen key to loosen those screws. So with the screws removed, the case should just pull apart. So here's a look inside the signal link. Now the jumpers in question that we need to set are all right here. And you can see these series of six red wires that are set up from the previous owner. And taking a look at the paper, it looks like the previous owner has this set up to match figure one. Now, when I looked through the instruction sheet, I found that the Ken Kenwood TS440 needs to follow figure two. So what I need to do is pull out one of these jumper wires and install this little jumper module that came with the cable. So it looks like these first three jumper wires are okay. They go from the ground pins on this side over to pins eight, seven, and six on this side. So that looks correct. Now, if we look from the bottom up, Pin one to the speaker looks correct, and pin two to the mic looks correct, but I need to pull out this third jumper pin and replace it. So I've got the little jumper module ready to go, and I'm gonna orient it so that the side with the two pins plugs into sockets four and three on the terminal strip, and that the side with the one pin plugs into the PTT socket. Pin alignment on this module isn't perfect, as you might expect. So I'm going to just adjust it with my pliers a little bit so that it drops into the socket properly. So that's all set. I've got the jumper set the way that the paper indicates they should be. So now I can just put this thing back together. So I want to clarify a couple of points here before I get any further with the video. The first is that this Kenwood TS440 is capable of rig control or cat control by a computer, but you need a separate cable to do that, and I just don't happen to have one on hand. I will, however, leave a link in the description below for the cable that I'm going to order so that I can do rig control with the TS440. The second thing I want to mention is that for the purposes of video, it would be easier to have everything set up here on the bench so that you guys could see it, but I don't currently have a working laptop, so I'm going to set the TS440 up over in my main radio operating area and connect it up to my desktop computer. The way I have everything set up, it's a little hard to see the connections and wires and such. So I'll show you the connections here on the bench first, and then I'll move everything over to the operating spot, and we'll move on with the software. So to connect up the signal link to the TS440, I'm going to grab the end with the modular style connector and plug it in here to the radio jack. And then I'm going to take this DIN plug and plug it into the ACC2 port on the TS440. So this connector is at a little bit of a weird angle. You can see here there's a little indicator to tell you where the clocking pin is. So I'm going to make sure this is oriented the right way and just plug it in. Now for this setup with the 440, the only other thing I need to connect up is the signal link to the computer. So I'm going to grab my USB cable and plug in this end to the USB jack and plug the other end 
into a free port on my computer. So before I dig in and show you guys this thing in operation, here's a look at how I've got it set up over on my radio bench. First up over here, of course, is the signal link and the TS440. And just like I showed in the last clip, I've got the signal link plugged into the accessory port on the Kenwood, and I've also got it plugged in with a USB cable to the computer back there. Now I've got two monitors on my computer, this is one of them, and you can see I've got WSJTX up so that we can play with FT8 in a minute. So as far as antennas go, I was outside yesterday and found a branch down on my main HF antenna, which is an 80 and 40 meter fan dipole, and I'm not really able to get it to tune up. So right now, for this video, we're going to run 20 meters exclusively, and I've got that hooked up to an old CB antenna, of all things, and I'm using this tuner to get it tuned up. But it seems to be working just fine, so we'll move on with that. So the first step in getting the signal link set up and operating with the computer is to simply plug it in. Now in my case I'm running Windows 10 and when I plugged it in for the first time Windows automatically found the correct driver for it and kind of installed itself. And once that happened I was pretty much able to use it so I didn't really have to do any driver configuration. So one last thing to mention about receiving before we get into transmit setup is over on the signal link here there's three controls on the front. You can see here this receive control, I've got it set in about the middle of its range, but if you needed to adjust the receive audio for some reason, you can control it here, just like a volume control. As far as this delay control goes, I've left that all the way over to the left, and that seems to work fine for me. So the first thing I wanted to try with the signal link is FT8. So I fired up WSJTX and got it configured. Now I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on how to set up WSJTX, there's tons of videos on that already, but I will talk about what I needed to do specifically to get my setup working with the Kenwood and the signal link. So to get WSJTX working, I needed to go into the settings menu. And the first thing I needed to do was go to the audio tab and change the sound card settings. So for setting up the input audio to WSJTX or the audio that's coming out of the radio and into the computer, I needed to choose the signal link. It's a little bit cryptic here, but the signal link is listed here as microphone USB audio codec, so that's what I chose. And then to set the output audio or the audio going from WSJTX in the computer through the signal link into the radio, I needed to pretty much choose the same thing. The speaker's USB audio codec, that's the signal link. So the next thing I needed to do is set up radio control within WSJTX. So I went over to the radio tab, and from the list of radios, I chose the Kenwood TS440, which is what I'm using. Now, as far as the PTT method goes, because I don't have a CAT cable connected up, I don't have any CAT control, so my PTT method is going to be VOX. And what that means is that whenever WSJTX sends an audio signal through the signal link into the radio, the radio senses that audio stream and keys itself with its internal circuitry. Now if I had rig control, I would play with these settings over here on the left to get everything working right. Now my other option is to not even pick a radio up here. I could just go up to the top, choose none, and just leave Vox selected over here, and that would work fine too. So once I had everything configured, I went over to mode, selected FT8, and then chose over here the band that I wanted to be in. And then because I don't have rig control, I had to go manually tune the Kenwood to 14.074 and put it in upper sideband mode. And once I did all that, everything started working. You can see all the signals that I'm receiving up here, and you can see all the activity up here on the waterfall. Got plenty of signals across the FT8 band. So for setting up the transmitter, I've switched the antenna tuner over to its internal dummy load so that we're not putting a signal out over the air and interfering with anyone. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to WSJTX and I'm going to click on this tune button that's right here on the software and that'll enable the transmitter on the radio and we can make some adjustments. So the radio is now in transmit mode. We can tell that because the red light and the signal link is on and the radio is transmitting. Now I've also got the Kenwood's meter switched over to ALC mode. So what I'll do now is I'll adjust the TX control on the signal link and the mic control on the radio to get the needle so that it's in the lower part of the ALC zone on the meter. So setting the radio up for just a little bit of ALC action should allow me to have enough power output to make a decent number of contacts, but prevent the signal from getting too wide or splattering because of distortion. 
So like I said before, I'm not going to get into too much detail on how to use any of these programs like WSJTX. But as you can see here, now that I've got the transmit and receive configuration all set, I was able to make a contact. So everything seems to be working with WSJTX and FT8. Now I'm going to switch over to FL Digi and try a little PSK31. Well, I'm going to receive it anyway, and I'll go through the motions of setting up the transmit, but I've actually never made a PSK31 contact, so I need to do a little more research before I actually hit the transmit button and put a signal out over the air. And again, because I don't have cat control, I need to tune the radio myself, so I'll just spin this down to 14070. So I've got FL Digi up and running. The first thing I need to do is go to the configure pull down and pull up the configure dialog. Once that's up, I'm going to go to the sound card option and expand that out and then go to the devices tab. Now initially when I set this up, port audio wasn't checked, so I checked that to enable it. So then I went over here to the capture setting and I chose the signal link from the list of devices. And again, this happens to be the microphone USB audio codec selection. And then I went under playback and I chose the speakers USB audio codec again to link up to the signal link. So just like before, I'm not gonna go through a ton of detail here with the software, but I'll give you some basics. Now over here on the left is the panel showing pretty much everything that is getting passed through to the computer from the radio through the signal link and is sort of getting decoded. Down here in the waterfall, you can kind of see the active signals that are getting passed. And the stronger the color, the stronger the signal. Now right now, I've got my passband set right here, and that's what's getting decoded up here in the yellow. And you can see that sometimes when a stronger signal like this one shows up, we get clear text, and other times if the signal is weak, we get some garbage. You can see here we got a strong signal coming through again, and up here it's in the clear, up in the yellow, and you can see it's quite readable at this point. So down here in the blue window is where I would type if I were involved in this QSO. Once I type something and hit enter, the radio would transmit it to the other station. But since I'm not in this QSO, I'm gonna make sure I don't send anything over. So here's another example of a strong signal that I've just clicked on. You can kind of see it getting decoded here. You can see there that was YV4DHS calling CQ. So now that we've got receiving all set, I'm going to switch over to my dummy load and tune up my transmitter. Now this row of buttons down here are some predefined macros that you can change if you want to, but the software comes sort of default with some definition here. So if I right click on the button, you can see a window pops up and it shows the little macro that's defined for that button. And you can see that it's a combination of variables and fixed strings that end up getting transmitted out through this macro. Now I'm going to move over to one of these purple buttons and I'm going to right click on this one that's labeled T slash R. And you can see that this one just toggles between transmit and receive. So I can use this one to enable my transmitter and sort of tune the radio. So over here on the tuner, I've switched the mode control over to my internal dummy load. And over here on the radio, I've got my meter in the ALC mode again. So now if I hit that TR button over on FL Digi, the radio should start to transmit. And you can see from the meter on the tuner and the radio that it's transmitting. And just like before, I want to adjust my ALC so it's sort of down here near the bottom of the range. So I'm going to back off the TX control on the signal link so it's down low like that. And then just to double check, you can see over here on the tuner, the radio is putting out power. We've got a little bit of an SWR for some reason, even though it's on the dummy load, but it's working. So now I'm still hearing signals here, even though I'm most definitely on the dummy load right now. I guess we're just getting some signals coupled through the tuner. But either way, what I can do now is click on this button as if I were going to call CQ live on the air, but I'm just going to transmit into my dummy load just to make sure everything is working. So as you can see, it's going through the transmit sequence, and as each letter is transmitted, it turns red. And if I draw your attention over to the radio, you can see everything is acting the way that it should as far as transmit goes. So next I decided I wanted to try MMSS TV and see if I could get any slow scan TV images off of 20 meters. So after opening the program, the first thing I did was go to options and set up MMSS TV. So the setup dialog appears and under RX, I left pretty much everything at these defaults. Over on TX, I left the defaults there too, except I put my call sign in up here. Over on the miscellaneous tab, I changed my input 
over to the SignalLink USB codec. And then of course I changed the output over to the SignalLink as well. Everything else I left at the default and hit OK to write it in. And once I did that, I was able to start receiving images. Now, it's a little bit late in the day, so 20 meters is shut down now, but earlier in the day when I was messing around with this, I did do a screen record and managed to record a couple of the images as they came through. So it is possible to transmit slow scan TV using this application and the signal link too. But just like with PSK31, I've never really done that before, so I'm not comfortable trying it out on this video. But I'll go through the motions on the dummy load as if we were going to make a transmission. So I've clicked on the template tab and I can kind of set up the image that I want to send out. Right now it's a black background with CQ SSTV and my call sign on it. There's controls at the bottom here that I can use to add text and draw lines and boxes and things like that. Now right now you can see I've just got a black background, but if I want to change the image, I can go back to TX, I can right click out in the field here, and I can choose load from file. You can see it brings up a dialog box and right here in this folder I've got a few sample images, so I'm just going to pick this one. And then you can see another dialog box pops up with some options for editing the image. I'm going to leave it just as it is and click OK. And you can see the dialog box goes away and it puts my image in the background. And just like with the other programs, I want to set my transmitter, make sure everything is tuned the way that I want, and make sure that I've got ALC adjusted properly. So in the software, you can see next to the TX button here, there is a 1750 button. That'll allow me to transmit a 1750 hertz tone, which I'll use for tuning the transmitter. So just like before, I've got the tuner set to the dummy load position. I've got the radio tuned to 14230 in the upper sideband mode, and I've got my meter set to ALC mode. Now I'll push that 1750 button in the software. You can see the radio is transmitting, and I can adjust the TX control on the signal link to get myself down in that lower portion of the ALC section. And <laughs> once I'm happy with it, I can click the 1750 button again to get it to stop transmitting. Now that I've got everything set up in the software and the radio's ready to go, I can just push the TX button and it'll start transmitting this image. If I turn on another receiver that I've got in the room and turn the volume up, you can hear the slow scan TV image being transmitted by my radio. Here in the software you can see there's a line that scrolls through the image to let you know how much progress is being made. And once the image is done being transmitted, it automatically turns off the transmit and goes back into receive mode. So the signal link is a pretty handy device, especially if you've got an older radio like this TS440 that doesn't have a built-in sound card and you want to play with some digital modes. Now you can still buy these new, and I'll leave a link down in the description below in case you're interested in learning more. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.